Welcome everybody, this is Alan with Daily Armor of God. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you're all doing well. This is Reading the Bible in 123 Days. We're on day 40 and we'll be reading 1 Kings 10-15. through So, we are reading about Solomon and fortunately Solomon, what we read about Solomon is almost up, but uh, We'll get to that here in a bit. So, 1 Kings 10, verse 1. And when the queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of Yahweh, she came to prove him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great train, with camels that bear spices and very much gold and precious stones. And when she was come to Solomon, she communed with him of all that was in her heart. And Solomon told her all her questions. There was not anything hid from the king, which he told her not. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all Solomon's wisdom in the house that he had built, and the meat of his table, and the sitting of his servants, and the attendance of his ministers, and their apparel, and his cupbearers, and his ascent by which he went up unto the house of Yahweh, there was no more spirit in her. And she said unto the king, it was a true report that I heard in mine own land of thy acts and thy wisdom. Howbeit I believed not the words until I came and mine eyes had seen it. And behold, the half was not told me. Thy wisdom and prosperity exceedeth the fame which I heard. Happy are thy men, happy are these thy servants, which stand continually before thee, and that hear thy wisdom. Blessed be Yahweh thy God, which delighteth in thee, to set thee on the throne of Israel, because Yahweh loved Israel forever. Therefore made he king, thee king to do judgment and justice. And she gave the king a hundred and twenty talents of gold, and of spices very great store, and precious stones, and there came no more such abundance of spices as these, which the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. And the navy also of Hiram, that brought gold from Ophir, brought in from Ophir great plenty of almug trees and precious stones. And the king made of the almug trees pillars for the house of Yahweh, and for the king's house, harps also, and psalteries, and for singers. There came no such almug trees, nor were seen unto this day. And king Solomon gave unto the queen of Sheba all her desire whatsoever she asked, beside that which Solomon gave her of his royal bounty. So she turned and went to her own country, she and her servants. Now the weight of gold that came to Solomon in one year was six hundred threescore and six talents of gold. Now isn't that an interesting number? Beside that he had of the merchantmen, and of the traffic of the spice merchants, and of all the kings of Arabia, and of the governors of the country, and King Solomon made two hundred targets of beaten gold, six hundred shekels of gold went to one target, and made three hundred shekels of beaten gold, three pound of gold went to one shield, and the king put them in the house of the forest of Lebanon. Moreover, the king made a great throne of ivory and overlaid it with the best gold. The throne had six steps, and the top of the throne was round behind, and there were stays on either side of the place of the seat, and two lines beside the stays. And twelve lines stood there on the one side and on the other upon the six steps, and there was not like made in any kingdom. And all King Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest Lebanon were of pure gold. None were of silver. It was nothing accounted of in the days of Solomon. For the king had at sea a navy of Tharshish with the navy of Haram. Once in three years came the navy of Tharshish, bringing gold and silver, ivory and apes and peacocks, for uh, so King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and for wisdom. And all the earth sought to Solomon to hear his wisdom which God had put in his heart. And they brought every man his present vessels of silver, vessels of gold, and garments and armor and spices, horses and mules, a rate year by year. And Solomon gathered together chariots and horsemen, and he had a thousand and four hundred chariots and twelve thousand horsemen, whom he bestowed in the cities for chariots and with the king at Jerusalem. And the king made silver to be in Jerusalem as stones and cedars made he to be as the sycamore trees that are in the vale for abundance. 
And Solomon had horses brought out of Egypt and linen yarn, and king's merchants received the linen yarn at a price. And a chariot came up and went out of Egypt for six hundred shekels of silver, and a horse for a hundred and fifty. So for all the kings of the Hittites and for the kings of Syria did they bring them up by their means. First Kings 11 But King Solomon loved many strange women, together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites, of the nations concerning which Yahweh said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go in to them, neither shall they come in to, unto you, for they will surely turn away your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto these in love, and he had seven hundred wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass, when Solomon was old, that his wives turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with Yahweh his God, as was the heart of David his father. For Solomon went after Ashtaroth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. But Solomon did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and went not fully after Yahweh, as did David his father. You know, that is an interesting fact when you think about it. David, despite his sins... He only relied on God. There was no account of him turning to other gods. So, again, he sinned. We all sin. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. So he sinned despite his sins and struggles. He only relied on God, the one true living God, which is amazing to think about. Whereas Solomon, despite all his wisdom that God had given him and wealth and power and abundance, he still, still went after other gods. It's so sad to see this. Like I said, nobody is perfect, and we all make mistakes, and we all sin. It's still sad to read about this, because you see how much God blessed him, and it still seems like it wasn't enough for him. So anyway, that's why we must, we must put our faith alone in God. And God, the one true living God. So, then did Solomon build a high place for Cheshmosh, the abomination of Moab, in the hill that is before Jerusalem, and for Moloch, the abomination of the children of Ammon. And likewise did he for all his strange wives, which burnt incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And Yahweh was angry with Solomon because his heart was churned from Yahweh God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice, and had commanded him concerning this thing, that he should not go after other gods, but he kept not that which Yahweh commanded. Wherefore Yahweh said unto Solomon, For as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my covenant and my statutes, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. Notwithstanding in thy days I will not do it for David thy father's sake, but I will rend it out of the hand of thy son. Abate, I will not rend away all the kingdom, but I will give one tribe to thy son, for David my servant's sake, and for Jerusalem's sake, which I have chosen. And Yahweh stirred up an adversary unto Solomon, Hadad the Edomite, he was of the king's seed in Edom. For it came to pass when David was in Edom, and Joab the captain of the host was gone up to bury the slain, after he had smitten every male in Edom. For six months did Joab remain there with all Israel until he had cut off every male in Edom. That Hadad fled, and a certain Edomites of his father's servants with him, to go into Egypt, Hadad being yet a little child. And they rose out of Midian, and came to Paran, and they took men with them out of Paran, and they came to Egypt, unto Pharaoh king of Egypt, which gave them a house, and appointed him victuals, and gave him land. And Hadad found great favor in the sight of Pharaoh, so that he gave him to wife the sister of his own wife, the sister of Tophenes, the queen, and the sister of Tophenes bare him Genubath, his son, whom Tophenes weaned in Pharaoh's house, and Genubath was in Pharaoh's household among the sons of Pharaoh. And when Hadad heard in Egypt that David slept with his fathers, and that Joab the captain of the host was dead, Hadad said to Pharaoh, Let me depart, that I may go to mine own country. Then Pharaoh said unto him, But what hast thou lacked with me, that, behold, thou seekest to go to thine own country? And he answered, 
nothing, howbeit let me go in any wise. And God stirred him up another adversary, Rezon the son of Elidah, which fled from his lord Hadadezer, king of Zobah. And he gathered men unto him, and because and became captain over a band when David slew them of Zobah, and they went to Damascus and dwelt therein and reigned in Damascus. And he was an adversary to Israel all the days of Solomon, beside the mischief that Hadad did. And he abhorred Israel and reigned over Syria. And Jeroboam the son of Nebat, an Ephrathite of Zareda, Solomon's servant, whose mother name was Zerah, a widow woman, even he lifted up his hand against the king. And this was the cause that he lifted up his hand against the king. Solomon built Milo and repaired the breaches of the city of David his father. And the man Jeroboam was a mighty man of valor, and Solomon, seeing the young man that was, he was industrious, he made him ruler over all the charge of the house of Joseph. It came to pass that at that time when Jeroboam went out to Jer Jerusalem, that a prophet, Aijah, the Shiloh knight found him in the way, and he had clad himself with a new garment, and they two were alone in the field. And Aijah caught the new garment that was on him, and rent it in twelve pieces. And he said to Jeroboam, Take thee ten pieces, for thus saith Yahweh the God of Israel, Behold, I will rend the kingdom out of the hand of Solomon, and will give ten tribes to thee. But he shall have one tribe for my servant David's ache, and for Jerusalem's sake, the city which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel because that they have forsaken me, and have worshipped Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, Chemosh, the god of the Moabites, Milcom, the god of the children of Ammon, and have not walked in my ways to do that which is right in mine eyes, to keep my statutes and my judgments, as did David his father. Albeit I will not take the whole kingdom out of his hand, but I will make him prince all the days of his life for David my servant's sake, whom I chose because he kept my commandments and my statutes. But I will take the kingdom out of his son's hand, and will give it unto thee, even ten tribes. And unto his son will I give one tribe, that David my servant may have a light always before me in Jerusalem, the city which I have chosen me to put my name there. And I will take thee, and thou shalt reign according to all that thy soul desireth, and shalt be king over Israel. And it shall be that if thou wilt hearken unto all that I command thee, and wilt walk in my ways, and do that which is right in my sight, to keep my statutes and my commandments, as David my servant did, that I will be with thee, and build thee a sure house, as I built for David, and will give Israel unto thee. And I will for this afflict the seed of David, but not forever. Solomon sought therefore to kill Jeroboam, and Jeroboam arose and fled into Egypt until Shishak king of Egypt, and was in Egypt until the death of Solomon. And the rest of the acts of Solomon, and all that he did, and his wisdom, are they not written in the book of the Acts of Solomon? And the time that Solomon reigned in Jerusalem over all Israel was forty years. And Solomon slept with his fathers, and was buried in the city of David his father, and Re Rehoboam his son reigned in his stead. Here's another interesting fact right here. Solomon reigned in Jerusalem forty years. Now, David, in total... He reigned 40 years as well. Granted, he only reigned in Jerusalem for 33, but he also reigned elsewhere besides Jerusalem for seven years. So in total, his reign as king was 40 years. Same here with Solomon. 40 years he reigned as king. That's just interesting because we see that number pop up a lot, 40 years. We see 40 a lot. We see 7 a lot. And we see 12 a lot. So it's just interesting that 40 keeps popping up. And how many times did we read about that in um, Judges? Right? So the people would be taken away captive. God would raise up a judge. The judge would go and rescue the people Israel. And then there would be peace for 40 years until that judge died. And then they would start the process all over again. They would turn to other gods. They would get captive. Then they would cry out to God, and God would raise up a new judge. That judge would rescue them again, and there would be peace for 40 years. So it's a common number that keeps popping up, and it's just something to think about. Um, why it's always 40, why it's always 7 here and there. So, very interesting. So Rehoboam is his son, and he is now reigning. 
1 Kings 12, 1. And Rehoboam went to Shechem, for all Israel were come to Shechem to make him king. And it came to pass when Jeroboam the son of Nebat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon. And Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt. Now this is going to get a little confusing. There's Je Jeroboam and there's Rehoboam, right? So the best way to distinguish this is remember that Rehoboam is the son that Solomon wanted to reign king in Jerusalem. And we're going to find out here that the, the kingdom gets divided. And so Jerusalem will have Rehoboam and Jeroboam will be over all the rest of the tribes of Israel. So that's one way to think about if you get confused. So Rehoboam strictly will be king in Jerusalem in Judea. So we're going to get to that here in a second. So Jeroboam the son of Bat, who was yet in Egypt, heard of it, for he was fled from the presence of King Solomon, and Jeroboam dwelt in Egypt, that they sent and called him, and Jeroboam and all the congregation of Israel came and spake unto Rehoboam, saying, Thy father made our yoke grievous, now therefore make thou the grievous service out of thy father in this heavy yoke which he put upon us lighter, and we will serve thee. And he said unto them, Depart yet for three days, and come again to me, and the people departed. And King Rehoboam consulted with the old men that stood before Solomon his father while he yet lived, and said, How do ye advise that I may answer this people? And they spake unto him, saying, If thou wilt be a servant unto this people this day, and wilt serve them, and answer them, and speak good words to them, then they will be thy servants forever. But he forsook the counsel of the old men which had given him, and consulted with the young men that were grown up with him, and which stood before him. And he said unto them, What counsel give ye that we may answer this people, who hath spoken to me, saying, Make the yoke which thy father did put upon a slider? And the young men that were grown up with him spake unto him, saying, Thus shalt thou speak unto this people that spake unto thee, saying, Thy father made our yoke heavy, but make thou it lighter unto us. Thus shalt thou say unto them, My little finger shall be thicker than my father's loins. And now, whereas my father did lead you with a heavy yoke, I will add to your yoke. My father hath chastised you with his whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. So Jeroboam and all the people came to Rehoboam the third day, as the king had appointed, saying, Come to me again the third day. And the king answered the people roughly, and, and forsook the old men's counsel that they gave him, and spake to them after the counsel of the young men, saying, my father made your yoke heavy, and I will add to your yoke. My father also chastised you with whips, but I will chastise you with scorpions. Wherefore the king hearkened not unto the people, for the cause was from Yahweh, that he might perform his saying, which Yahweh spake by Ahijah the Shilonite unto Jeroboam, the son of Nebet. So when all Israel saw that the king hearkened not unto them, the people answered the king, saying, what portion have we in David? Neither have we inheritance in the son of Jesse to your tents, O Israel. Now see to thine own house, David. So Israel departed unto their tents. But as for the children of Israel, which dwelt in the cities of Judah, Rehoboam reigned over them. Then King Rehoboam sent Adoram, who was over the tribute, and all Israel stoned him with stones that he died. Therefore King Rehoboam made speed to get him up to his chariot to flee to Jerusalem. So Israel rebelled against the house of David unto this day. And it came to pass, when all Israel heard that Jeroboam was come again, that they sent and called him unto the congregation and made him king over all Israel. There was none that followed the house of David but the tribe of Judah only. So Judah... Judah was with Rehoboam, and every other part of Israel was with Jeroboam. So, we finally see the split of the kingdom right here. And when Rehoboam was come to Jerusalem, he assembled all the house of Judah with the tribe of Benjamin, a hundred and fourscore thousand chosen men, which were warriors to fight against the house of Israel, to bring the kingdom again to Rehoboam the son of Solomon. But the word of God came unto Shemaiah, the man of God, saying, 
Speak unto Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, king of Judah, and unto all the house of Judah and Benjamin, and to the remnant of the people, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, Ye shall not go up, nor fight against your brethren, the children of Israel. Return every man to his house, for this thing is from me. They hearkened therefore to the word of Yahweh, and returned to depart according to the word of Yahweh. Then Jeroboam built Shechem in Mount Ephraim, and dwelt therein, and went out from thence, and built Penuel. And Jeroboam said in his heart, Now shall the kingdom return to the house of David. If this people go up to do sacrifice in the house of Yahweh at Jerusalem, then shall the heart of this people turn again unto their lord, even unto Rehoboam the king of Judah. And they shall kill me, and go again to Rehoboam king of Judah. Whereupon the king took counsel, and made two calves of gold, and said unto them, it is too much for you to go up to Jerusalem. Behold thy gods, O Israel, which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. He set the one in Bethel, and the other put he in Dan. And this thing became a sin, for the people went to worship before the one, even unto Dan. So, the people of Israel, who had Jeroboam as their king, Jeroboam didn't want them going to Jerusalem to worship because he feared that they would turn to the one true God and, and turn back to Rehoboam to be on his side. So what did he do? He built golden calves and told them to worship the golden calf. Does that sound familiar? Children of Israel did that when they were in Egypt or when they came out of Egypt and were waiting for Moses at Mount Sinai and uh, they got impatient and made... Aaron make the golden calf and they worship that and did a bunch of abominations before it and here we see the same thing happening again so first Kings 12 31 and he made a house of high places and made priests the lowest of the people which were not the sons of Levi and Jeroboam ordained a feast in the eighth month of the 15th day of the month like unto the feast that is in Judah and he offered upon the altar so did he in Bethel sacrifice unto calves that he had made, and he placed in Bethel the priests of the high places which he had made. So he offered upon the altar which he had made in Bethel the fifteenth day of the eighth month, even in the month which he had devised of his own heart, and ordained a feast unto the children of Israel, and he offered upon the altar and burnt incense. So once again we see Jeroboam, king of Israel, not Judah, he is basically mimicking what God wanted for him. Instead, he's offering up these sacrifices and doing it his way unto his gods, little g, and worshiping idols, doing wicked, evil things. So this is essentially, I mean, they've been in a cycle of you know, worshiping idols and false gods throughout all of the, the history of Israel. But we see here during the time of kings, it's just going to get worse and worse. And we're going to get to the part that we talked about earlier, how the Bible itself will even say that some of these kings, actually most of these kings, get more wicked and more evil than any of the Canaanites that were originally in the land. And if you think about how great their sin was, and God wanted them to just be completely gone out of the land because their sins were so great, if the children of Israel do worse than them. So that, that's just very eye-opening. We'll find that here shortly, probably, about, um, about all that. Or we're going to see it through our uh, next few weeks, probably, of reading. We're going to see the downfall throughout all the different kings what's going to happen so first kings 13 and behold there came a man of god out of judah by the word of yahweh unto bethel and jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense and he cried against the altar in the word of yahweh and said o altar altar thus saith yahweh behold a child shall be born unto the house of david josiah by name and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon thee and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee and he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which Yahweh has spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass, when King Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God, which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. 
and his hand which he put forth against him dried up so he could not pull it in again to him. And the altar was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of Yahweh. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now the face of Yahweh thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought Yahweh, and the king's hand was restored him again, and, it, and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of Yahweh, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way, and returned not by the way he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken to the king. Them they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way? way went he, for his sons had seen what way the man of God went, which came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me, and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of Yahweh, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink water there, nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet also as thou art, and an angel speak unto me by the word of Yahweh, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So he went back with him, and did eat bread in his house and drink water. And it came to pass as they sat at the table that the word of Yahweh came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came, that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith Yahweh, For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of Yahweh, and hast not kept the commandment which Yahweh thy God commanded thee, but came back and hast eaten bread and drunken and water in the place, of the which Yahweh did say to, eat, say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water, thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulchre of thy fathers. So, this is a good example of listening to God versus listening to man. So, he listened to him when he said, oh yeah, God spoke to me. But God told him directly before not to stay and eat and drink in that land. But the, the man of God that came from Judah, he gave in to the words of man rather than heeding the words of God, unfortunately. This is a good reminder for us. The same thing. We should apply the same thing to us. We don't need to heed to the words of man. We need to heed to the words of God. God is higher than man. We should be honoring God's words, not man's words. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread, and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophets whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the ass stood by it, the lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, the men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of Yahweh. Therefore Yahweh hath delivered him unto the lion, which hath torn him and slain him, according to the word of Yahweh, which he spake unto him. And he spake to his son, saying, Saddle me the ass, and they saddled him. And he went and found his carcass cast in the way, and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass, and the lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. And the prophet took the carcass of the man of God, and laid it upon the ass, and brought it back. And the old prophet came to the city to mourn and to bury him. And he laid his carcass in his own grave, and they mourned over him, saying, Alas, my brother! And it came to pass after he had buried him, that he spake to his son, saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulchre wherein the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his bones. For the saying which he cried by the word of Yahweh against the altar in Bethel, and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria, shall surely come to pass. 
After this thing, Jeroboam returned not from his evil way, but made again of the lowest of the people priests of the high places. Whosoever would, he consecrated them, and he became one of the priests of the high places. And this thing became sin unto the house of Jeroboam, even to cut it off, and to destroy it from off the face of the earth. 1 Kings 14 at that time, Abijah, the son of Jeroboam, fell sick. And Jeroboam said to his wife, Arise, I pray thee, and disguise thyself, that thou be not known to be the wife of Jeroboam, and get thee to Shiloh. Behold, there is Ahijah, the prophet, which told me that I should be king over this people. And take with thee ten loaves and cracknels and a cruse of honey, and go to him. He shall tell thee what shall become of the child. And Jeroboam's wife did so, and arose, and went to Shiloh, and came to the house of Ahijah. Ajah could not see, for his eyes were set by reason of his age. And Yahweh said unto Ajah, Behold, the wife of Jeroboam cometh to ask a thing of thee for her son, for he is sick. Thus and thus shalt thou say unto her, for it shall be when she cometh in that she shall feign herself to be another woman. And it was so, when Ajah heard the sound of her feet, she came in at the door, that he said, Come in, thou wife of Jeroboam, why feignest thou thyself to be another? For I am sent to thee with heavy tidings. Go, tell Jeroboam, thus saith Yahweh, God of Israel, for as much as I exalted thee from among the people, and made thee prince over my people Israel, and rent the kingdom away from the house of David, and gave it thee, and yet thou hast not been my as my servant David, who kept my commandments, and who followed me with all his heart, to do that only which was right in mine eyes, but hast done evil above all that were before thee. Thou hast gone and made thee other gods and molten images, to provoke me to anger, and hast cast me behind thy back. Wherefore, behold, I will bring evil upon the house of Jeroboam, and will cut off from Jeroboam him that pisseth against the wall, and him that is shut up and left in Israel, and will take away the remnant of the house of Jeroboam, as a man taketh away dung, till it be all gone. In that dieth of Jeroboam in the city shall the dogs eat, and him that dieth in the field shall the fowls there eat, for Yahweh hath spoken it. Arise thou therefore, get thee to thine own house, so when thy feet enter into the city, the child shall die. And all Israel shall mourn for him and bury him, for he only of Jeroboam shall come to the grave, because in him there is found some good thing toward Yahweh God of Israel and the house of Jeroboam. Moreover, Yahweh shall raise him up a king over Israel, who shall cut off the house of Jeroboam that day. But what? Even now. For Yahweh shall smite Israel, as a reed is shaken in the water, and he shall root up Israel out of the good land, which he gave to their fathers, and shall scatter them beyond the river, because they have made their groves, provoking Yahweh to anger. He shall give Israel up because of the sins of Jeroboam, who did sin, and who made Israel to sin. And Jeroboam's wife arose and departed and came to Tirzah. When she came to the threshold of the door, the child died. They buried him, and all Israel mourned for him according to the word of Yahweh, which he spake by the hand of his servant Aijah the prophet. And the rest of the acts of Jeroboam, how he warred, how he reigned, behold, they are written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel. And the days which Jeroboam reigned were two and twenty years, and he slept with his fathers, and Nadab his son reigned in his stead. And Rehoboam the son of Solomon reigned in Judah, and Rehoboam was forty and one years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Ju Jerusalem, the city which Yahweh did choose out of all the tribes of Israel, to put his name there, and his mother's name was Nama and Ammonitus. In Judah, did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, which they com had committed, above all that their fathers had done. For they also built them high places, and images, and groves, on every high hill, and under every green tree. And there were also Sodomites in the land, and they did according to all the abominations of the nations which Yahweh cast out before the children of Israel. Here we go, this is what I was talking about. One of the places that they talk about this they did according to all the abominations of the nations the Canaanites before the children of Israel got to 
the land of Canaan. They did. All of them. According to all the nations which Yahweh cast up before the children of Israel. Isn't that something? It's crazy. And sad. And it came to pass in the fifth year of King Rehoboam that Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem. And he took away the treasures of the house of Yahweh and the treasures of the king's house. He even took away all. And he took away all the shields of gold which Solomon had made. And king Rehoboam made in their stead brass and shields and committed them unto the hands of the chief of the guard, which kept the door of the king's house. And it was so when the king went into the house of Yahweh that the guard bare them and brought them back into the guard chamber. Now the rest of the acts of Rehoboam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? And there was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all their days. And Rehoboam slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David. And his mother's name was Nama and Ammonitus. And Abijam, his son, reigned in his stead. Man, it's so sad reading these passages. We're seeing the fall. The fall and the wickedness of the kings of Israel and Judah. And it's just going to get sad to say, but it's going to get worse and worse and worse all the way until the very last king of Israel, king of Judah, until they're taken away and or killed to Babylon. So, kind of uh, kind of sad, but despite all of it, there's still stuff we can learn from these passages. 1 Kings 15, verse 1. Now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebet reigned in Abijam over Judah. Three years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Makkah, the daughter of Absalom. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him, and his heart was not perfect with Yahweh his God, as the heart of David his father. Nevertheless, for David's sake did Yahweh his God give him a lamp in Jerusalem, to set up his son after him, to establish Jerusalem. Because David did that which was right in the eyes of Yahweh, and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, save only the matter of Uriah the Hittite. There was war between Rehoboam and Jeroboam all the days of his life. Now the rest of the acts of Abijam and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Judah? And there was war between Abijam and Jeroboam. And Abijam slept with his fathers, and they buried him in the city of David, and Asa his son reigned in his stead. And in the twentieth year, year of Jeroboam the king of Israel reigned Asa over Judah. And forty-one years reigned he in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Makkah, the daughter of Absalom. And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of Yahweh, as did David his father. So we, we will see very few, very few kings did that which was right in the eyes of, of Yahweh. Most of them are evil and wicked. But that's not to say there was no good kings, because there was. There was some. So you have to keep that in mind as well. And he took away the Sodomites out of the land, and they removed all the idols that his father had made. And Makkah, his mother, even her, he removed from being queen because she had made an idol in a grove. And Asa destroyed her idol and burnt it by the brook Kidron. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with Yahweh all his days. And he brought in the things which his father had dedicated, and the things which himself had dedicated, into the house of Yahweh, silver and gold and vessels. And there was war between Asa and Basha king of Israel all their days. And Basha king of Israel went up against Judah and built Ramah, that he might not suffer any to go out or come in to Asa king of Judah. Then Asa took all the silver and gold that were left in the treasures of the house of Yahweh and the treasures of the king's house, and delivered them into the hand of his servants. And King Asa sent them to Benhadad, the son of Tabriram, the son of Hezion, king of Syria, that dwelt at Damascus, saying, There is a league between me and thee, and between my father and thy father. Behold, I have sent thee a present of silver and gold. Come and break thy league with Basha, king of Israel, that he may depart from me. So Ben-Hadad hearkened unto King Asa, and sent the captains of the host which he had against the cities of Israel, and smote Ijon, and Dan, and Abel-Beth-Makkah, 
and all Sinaroth with all the land of Naphtali. And it came to pass when Basha heard thereof that he left off the building of Ramah and dwelt in Tirzah. Then King Asa made a proclamation throughout all Judah. None was exempted, and they took away stones of Ramah and the timber thereof, wherewith Basha had builded, and King Asa built with them Geba of Benjamin and Mizpah. And the rest of the acts of Asa, and all his might, and all that he did, and the cities which he built, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Judah? Nevertheless, in the time of his old age, he was diseased in his feet. And Asa slept with his fathers and was buried with his fathers in the city of David his father. And Jehoshaphat his son reigned in his stead. And Nadab the son of Jeroboam began to reign over Israel in the second year of Asa king of Judah. And reigned over Israel two years. And he did evil in the sight of Yahweh and walked in the way of his father. And in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. And Basha the son of Aijah of the house of Issachar, conspired against him, and Basha smote him at Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, for Nadab and all Israel laid siege to Gibbethon. Even in the third year of Asa king of Judah did Basha slay him, and reigned in his stead. And it came to pass when he reigned that he smote all the house of Jeroboam, and left not to Jeroboam any that breathed until he had destroyed him, according to, unto the saying of Yahweh, which he spake by his servant Aijah the Shilonite, because the sins of Jeroboam which he sinned, in which he made Israel sin, by his provocation wherewith he provoked Yahweh, God of Israel, to anger. Now the rest of the acts of Nadab and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? And there was war between Asa and Basha, king of Israel, all their days. In the third year of Asa king of Judah began Basha, the son of Aijah, to reign over all Israel in Tirzah twenty and four years. And he did evil in the sight of Yahweh, and walked in the way of Jeroboam, and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin. Okay, well, we're going to have to stop here, but uh, we're going to get into a lot of this, and it's going to seem like it's repeating um, you'll find that there are a few good kings scattered here and there, but they're very few. And mostly it's evil, and then the next generation are more evil and wicked than the previous. Um, until, like I said, until the years come when uh, the very last king of Judah is taken away. And all of them are taken, either destroyed or taken away to Babylon. And the whole of Jerusalem destroyed. So, it is a downfall that we don't want to, we don't want to see, but we could still learn things from it. I mean, there's so much learning in these passages. What we have to do is pray for discernment and understanding. People think that the Old Testament, there's nothing for us as Christians today. There's nothing for us in the Old Testament. And I laugh because there's so much that we can learn from every single book in the Old Testament. There is something that we can learn from and apply to our lives. So we just have to pray for that discernment and understand that we all find it. And God will lead us to it. So that's so why every day I pray when I read that I will learn something and grow and understand despite me reading the whole Bible um, there are so many new things that I come to realize when I reread it and that's why I love reading the Bible so there's always always something new you can learn and something that you can use to grow so, reading the Bible is uh, not in vain all right, that's going to be it for today, guys. Thanks for joining me, and I hope you have a great evening, morning, noon, wherever you're at. Remember to put God first in everything you do. Have faith in Him, trust in Him, and wait upon Him, and you'll never be sorry. And God willingly, we'll see you tomorrow with more Bible reading. So, thanks again, and we will see you later. Bye-bye.